Aloha, I'm David Phillips from the USGS Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. As part of HVO's 2022 Volcano Awareness Month, I will provide a short update on HVO's ongoing recovery from the 2018 Kilauea eruption. The catastrophic events of 2018 impacted HVO in many ways. Many instruments were lost. Monitoring infrastructure was impacted, including power and communications. And HVO staff had to evacuate the observatory building itself, which was damaged beyond repair. However, thanks to disaster relief funding, HVO is not just rebuilding, but is actually gaining new capabilities and new scientific knowledge in order to continue its mission better than ever. The disaster relief funding for HVO is focused on three major activities. One is restoring and hardening volcano monitoring and eruption response capabilities. Most of today's update will provide highlights of this activity. Another area is new scientific investigations to better understand volcanic processes and future threats. Many of these projects are still in progress and have been delayed due to the pandemic and other factors. Finally, the third area is building new HVO facilities. Two new buildings are planned. The new headquarters will be at the University of Hawaii at Hilo campus. There will also be a small field station up in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. We're still in the very earliest phases of the design of these buildings, and we don't have any other updates at this time. So let's talk more about restoring and hardening volcano monitoring and eruption response. As we just saw, one of the major activities of HVO's disaster recovery is restoring and hardening volcano monitoring and eruption response capabilities. A big part of this is scientific instrumentation to monitor and analyze activities such as earthquakes, ground deformation, gas emissions, and so on. New instruments will bring new capabilities, but also expanded coverage. And this is critical in areas such as Kilauea's East Rift Zone. In addition to instruments in the field, new lab equipment as well. And all of these instruments require a solid foundation of infrastructure for communications and computing. We're also bringing new capabilities such as UAS or drones, and we'll look at some examples of that. And finally, we collected a high resolution airborne LIDAR data set from helicopter that will allow us improved analysis and base maps for future studies. So let's look at some highlights of some of these things. As was demonstrated throughout the 2018 eruption and also the more recent eruptions, Visual and thermal imaging is a very powerful tool. And this equipment allows HVO to capture high quality eruption data sets with high spatial and temporal coverage for monitoring as well as research. This is a photo of HVO scientists monitoring the active lava lake within Halima'oma'u using a variety of imaging instruments. For example, on the left, on small camera and small tripods, we have rapid deployment instruments. And these can be put out and uh, they include remote telemetry and they can capture the evolution and changes of events through time. We also have specialized high resolution video camera and high dynamic range thermal imaging cameras. In addition to the rapid deployment types of cameras that were shown in the previous slide, this is an image from one of the continuous monitoring cameras that HVO has deployed in strategic places around Kilauea as well as other volcanoes. This one is a live continuous 24-7 coverage view of the current eruption in Lava Lake within Haleumaumau and this is an image from January 18th. And here is an image of one of our continuous thermal cameras which is monitoring the current activity within Haleumaumau. So between this and the previous examples, these continuously operating cameras provide each VO scientists with real-time situational awareness in terms of the activity that's going on 
And also, this provides a rich database of images through time so that we can make uh, more advanced calculations in addition to the situation awareness on demand. HBO's camera network not only provides real-time assessment of activity, but also allows us to analyze changes in activity through time. All of the webcam feeds are available on the public HBO website. And also on the website are images like this, where we have an interactive slider that allows you to compare images from the same camera at different points in time. This is an example showing two images of the current Halima'oma'o eruption. The image on the left was taken on September 29th, 2021, literally just minutes before the new eruption started. On the right it is the same angle of view, but of the eruption in full swing several days later. And on the website, you can slide this back and forth and look at the before and after. Another instrument that is widely used on both a continuous basis and also by field crews are laser rangefinders. These allow accurate measurements of the lava lake surface, for example. And we use these instruments either handheld or on tripods or again in 24-7 continuous deployments. For example, these rangefinder measurements that we've had allow us to estimate that the total rise of the lava lake since the latest eruption began on September 29th in 2021 has been over 70 meters or 230 feet. Another type of imaging and rangefinding instrument it's being used by HVO to monitor the current eruptions is a terrestrial laser scanner. And this actually generates a three-dimensional point cloud using LIDAR to measure many things, including high resolution maps, uh, topographic changes, and volume estimates through time. We are evaluating the instrument that we plan to purchase using supplemental funds. Supplemental funds are also allowing HBO to update and really revolutionize our ability to measure subsurface mass changes due to magma movements using gravimeters. HBO used supplemental funds to acquire the very first absolute quantum gravimeter acquired by any U.S. federal agency. This state-of-the-art instrument brings exciting new capabilities to HBO and complements HBO existing gravimeters, including new state-of-the-art campaign systems and real-time instruments as well. HBO uses GPS, GNSS instruments to measure ground deformation. Many of our instruments in the field provide a continuous data stream. Others are deployed as needed, as part of regional surveys or as part of rapid deployment eruption response. This photo shows an HVO scientist deploying one of these rapid response GPS GNSS systems after the eruption started in December of 2020. She is using one of the new upgraded instruments that were procured as part of this supplemental funding. And on the right, you can see example of how we are building more of these rapid deployment systems to have on hand to improve our response. As you can imagine, a robust and reliable infrastructure is a huge and necessary part of HVO operations. This includes telemetry, which is about getting the data from the field instruments back to the observatory for analysis, especially in real time, and also the computing infrastructure that is used by HVO scientists to analyze the data. And of course, for all manners of communication within the observatory, between other groups and emergency responders on the island, and groups off the island as well. So a big part of HVO's ongoing recovery is focused on the essential communications and computing infrastructure that makes observatory operations possible. In addition to instruments that collect data out in the field, part of the recovery includes new laboratory equipment as well. One of the highlights so far is HVO's new TEFRA lab. This will allow us to better analyze TEFRA including things like volcanic ash, bombs, and glasses such as Paley's hair, Paley's tears. 
So new and upgraded lab instruments include many things uh, from optical and infrared microscopes to 3D scanners optimized for scanning particles such as tephra, uh, pycnometers to measure the density of tephra samples. And another major aspect of a lot of these uh, uh, procurements um, is that supplemental lab resources will be used not only by HVO, but in collaboration with other volcano observatories within the USGS, and then certainly with the University of Hawaii at Hilo here on the island, uh, with a lot of shared resources between these two groups. Another emerging and revolutionary aspect of HVO's monitoring and research program is the use of unoccupied aircraft systems, UAS, or drones that are being flown by HVO to measure things like volcanic gas emissions, to collect photos uh, for mapping surveys of volcanic features, to measure ch other changes associated with the volcanoes. And we even used UAS missions to collect samples from the water lake that briefly formed within Halemaumau between the time of the collapse in 2018 and the onset of the new phase of summit eruptions in late 2020. And it's not just the UAS systems themselves and the flying them, but it's the actual scientific payload and the instruments that we use. So on the left, you can see some modified systems uh, being installed and used in the field by an HVO scientist. And over on the right, HVO scientists who are in the process of designing and building the electronics and the sensors that will be deployed on these UAS systems to collect data in the field. One of the other major contributions from supplemental funding in this category was the collection of high-resolution airborne LIDAR data for the generation of high-resolution topographic maps. And uh, in particular, we're talking about a helicopter LIDAR data set that was acquired in 2019 and that covered over 220 square miles of land that was affected by the 2018 eruption. This is an example of some of these LIDAR data that are used at the summit and uh, these data help us directly address primary eruption questions, uh, such as how deep is the lava lake? What is the erupted volume? When and where might lava overflow from Haleamau Ma'u onto other parts of Kilauea caldera floor? As part of HVO's fundamental mission, we work closely with Hawaii County Civil Defense, Hawaii Volcanoes National Park, and Hawaii Emergency Management Agency in terms of sharing data and assessing hazards and threats to the people of Hawaii. As HVO continues to recover from the catastrophic events of 2018, the disaster relief supplemental funding is allowing us to continue our mission now and into the future. Mahalo.